Welcome back to Geometry and Design. If you've been watching these videos since the very first one in the series, you might remember the first demonstration of furniture design that I did was of a small sitting stool, just a simple one, with nothing but, um, well, mostly nothing but rectilinear, uh, de rectilineal designs in it. As we move into our third unit for design, geometry and design, we're going to start adding curved design elements to our, our plans, our layouts. And one way to give a sense of some of the things that you might do would be to go back and revise that sitting stool design somewhat. Um, I'm going to introduce a curved profile on either end of the top uh, some curved cutouts in the sides, and some uh, curved lift reliefs under the uh, horizontal stretchers that support both the seat and then tie the side legs together. Um, most of these are going to just be done with simple circular arcs, uh, but they're going to be done, and uh, for each, each case they're going to be done in a different way. Now to speed the process along a little bit, I've already laid out the bounding boxes for the front elevation, side elevation, and plan view. And I've also drawn in a horizontal line to indicate where the top seat of the bench is. And we're really just going to go from there. And I'm going to do this mostly without a whole lot of explanation, although I imagine I'll be doing some talking as I go. I can't help myself. Um, other heads up for tonight's tutorial is that uh, this almost didn't happen tonight um, just because it was so noisy here in the in the barn. Um, the neighbor moved his cows into the pasture out behind uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the workshop and our goats and sheep were not too happy about it so they spent a good hour braying and mooing at each other. Uh, loud enough that it would have been distracting to both you and me. So you might still hear some of that. And um, hey, at Plan B Workshop, we take social distancing real seriously. So we might as well get to it. And first thing I think I'll do is, uh, well, what, I'll, what I think I'll do is remember, maybe you don't, but just to look at some of the proportions here, we'll go over them. The front elevation uh, fit into a five to three uh, rectangular bounding box, whereas the side elevation fit into a two by three bounding box, and the top view then naturally had to fall into a um, five to two bounding box. So this module, one third of the height, is what I used for the step size on all of those those frames. And to get the thickness of the top, I took one of those modules and divided it up into five. Now one thing you might or might not remember is that I had about, well, I had exactly one-fifth of a module of overhang for the seat of the stool over the legs on the side. So I, I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. That's going to be important for some of the curved elements that we're going to put in here soon. So that is actually the true side of the bench, and this is just lip of the seat hanging over. I actually would like to indicate that, but only lightly, on the top as well, because that is where I'm going to put in one of our first curves. So 
So these are just going to be faint lines because I hope to erase them a little later. Switch up hands here. Don't have the dexterity tonight. My hands are cold. All right. So what the point of these strips here is that I would like to draw an arc of a circle that starts and stops at these two points here. And the center of the arc is going to be tangent at the midpoint there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to step through the process, not really explain it, because this is one of the constructions that we are going to learn. All these marks I'm making, I'm making pretty light because I know I am going to erase them later. And actually, while I'm at this, you know what I might as well do is just what I'm really doing here is just drawing a center line, constructing a center line by finding the midpoints of these vertical pieces. I might as well set my ruler on them accurately. Again, this is one of those opening tutorials for a unit where I'm really just trying to give you a sense of what's possible rather than going into detail on how it works. You might recognize in here some of the constructions that we've used in the past. That's not by accident. Geometry is math and you often build upon previous results to get newer and more sophisticated um, techniques as you progress. Cover that distance, get the intersection that I want. This will be the most complex construction of this demonstration. But the good news is, is that as we start building up actual techniques in the later videos in this unit, we're going to find that we can build a little machine that automates this construction if you find you need to do it a lot. I think I missed. All 
hard on these small pictures. Let's see that worked. Close enough. Now, if I knew where I'd stashed my erasing shield, that would be kind of a useful tool right now, but yeah, you know what? Guess it doesn't matter that much. We'll go fill these lines in a little darker here in a minute. Well, neatness matters, but tonight speed matters a little more. So what we've done is created a couple of circular arcs, part of a circle, that just darken in the lines here, that basically span from corner to corner of the box bring the apex of the arc out to the edge of the bounding box so that it's tangent there. Um, and so that's a construction that we'll look at a little bit more in detail as we uh, progress with this, this next unit. And so that's a way to get just a little bit of a visual interest and also soften some corners on this thing that might you know, catch you in the shin as you're walking by. Although if you make it solid enough, that's still going to hurt. Ask me how I know. Okay, now we're going to go in and maybe fill in some of the design elements of this front elevation view. And the first thing to do is lightly draw in the legs and also uh, get a new measurement. Maybe while I'm at it, draw in the stretcher lightly again that supports the top itself. And believe what I did for that stretcher thickness is that I took a measurement of three fifths of a module and drew that left to right. So I'll do that first. Lightly, because this is a piece that I'm going to cut a curve out of. For now I'll put it back the way that we had it in the design of our first video. Alright, and then I need to draw in the legs 
from here. And here. So the boards that make up the legs are all one fifth of a module thick, so I'm just keeping that same dimension. So at this point, I can get rid of these layout lines from the side of the bounding box. Nothing's going to poke out anymore there. And then the last thing that we had is down here at about this level, so two-thirds of the way down, we had one more stretcher, that's the bottom edge of it, that is once again three of those units high. So three-fifths of a module high. So I'm going to transfer those in. Okay. Let me get my T-square out of the way for a minute. Probably need more room than I've got here. We'll try to make this happen. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mark on both of these, one fifth of a module in, highlight it a little bit with a pencil so that it's visible. I'm going to darken to the outside of both of those marks. That's the part of this stretcher that I'm going to keep. And what I want to do is I want to relieve in a little bit of an arc. Not a real heavy arc, but a little bit of an arc. And so to do that, you need to set up a bigger compass. And this one doesn't have a pencil in it at the moment, so I need to do something about that. Uh, yeah, this one will be fine. Okay. So I'll use this compass to measure the distance. And let's see what this looks like. This might be too much of an arc. If it is, we'll adjust it. Oh, that's going to be way too much. All right, but that's okay. I am going to go ahead and draw lightly center line. This is where I'm likely not going to have enough space to do what I want, but we'll try. Cannot believe I just drew on my nice desk just for the sake of geometry. Oh, it's just going to miss. Well, this is going to have to be good enough. Pull this next one off is going to be a little bit of a mystery because not only am I out of paper, I'm out of desk, but um, I'm 
I'll try it anyway. I know what I can do. Only going to be a little bit of a kludge, but it's okay. Oh no, I need to take the measurement again. Oh, same thing. I forgot. I wanted to mark in on the bottom. Anyway, always make sure you're drawing on a big enough table to get your compass to go where you want it to go. Okay, good enough. Now, if you had been doing this on a big desk, about a room to spread out, you wouldn't have had to do what I just did. I was off camera, you couldn't see, but I was taking another notebook and jamming it between my waistline and the edge of the table so that I'd have a surface to bring the point of my compass out to so that I could find the center of that arc that I wanted. All right, so now just darken the parts that I want to keep, erase the ones that I don't, and we're pretty well done with the front view. That lightens that up a little bit. And the last thing that we need to do is put in some of the design elements on this side. And same thing, we had overhang coming in one fifth of a module under the, the, um, the top of this stool where the side would come into it. But then, instead of dropping straight down, it angled out to the bottom right and bottom left corner of the bounding rectangle for the side elevation view. So that we've got a line of support all the way under the outermost edge of this sitting stool. That adds some stability. It's a little easy, less easy for people to sit on it, wiggle around, and topple it over. Darken those. You know, I'm going to keep. All right. Then. I'm going to come in fifth of a module because what I don't want is for this bottom edge of this board to be here flat all the way across on its bottom edge. Um, that just makes it harder for this thing to be stable on uneven floors. So I'd rather have four points of contact. So I really only want this part 
in this part to be in contact with the ground and I want to relieve this area here. Now in the first video in the geometry and design series I think what I did is that I cut a semi-circular relief out of it much in the way that I cut these reliefs out. I picked a radius set it down under the mid the center line and, and drew my arc. I'm not going to do that this time though. Uh, I'm going to make note, I think I'm going to bring my T-square, uh, maybe not. I'm going to make note of, yeah, I want it back. I'm going to make note of where this is. Because that middle stretcher there is going to come through right here. It's a through tenon. So I'll draw that in in a little while. But I would like my relief to go up towards that, but not too far up towards it. So I'm going to draw a center line. And I'm going to maybe step one, two, three fifths of a module up that center line. And I'm going to lightly draw a triangular notch. point. Okay. Now I could leave that, but this is a tutorial about curves, so I don't want to have a triangular relief cut out. I want to have a curved relief. I'm just looking for my small compass that has... Oh, there it is pencil on it. Next thing I want to do is find the midpoint of these two diagonals that I drew. They should be pretty similar to each other. But well, well, we'll do that with a bigger compass because we know how to bisect segments. So I'll just do that here. Lightly, of course. Since they're both nominally the same size, I'm just going to find the midpoint of one and then measure it onto the other. Okay. See how that works. like but All right. okay close as I said speed's a little more important than accuracy tonight but let's not get carried away okay more or less found the midpoints of those two arcs, or those two segments. So here's what I'm going to do with those. I am going to draw, let's see, I want to, I want to draw a curve that's going to look kind of like that. And so what I need to do is find center down here. Without changing the setting on this compass, I'm going to center up here. Okay. 
I'll go back and darken these lines that still matter in a minute. And it'll look okay again. You know, one thing that you might want to consider when you're doing complex designs like this that have all these intersecting arcs and things that require you to locate centers is I'm not going to do it in the video because you won't be able to see what's going on, but you can get these blue pencils for sketching, blue colored pencils. Some are erasable, some are not. Get the kind that are not. I mean, no, get the kind that are. Obviously, we do a lot of erasing. And you can use those to do things like locate these centers that I'm constantly erasing. And um, they're a lot easier to clean up. And then if you actually take your sketches and design a, a texture on them, you know, if you're trying to make them more of a representative picture for maybe a client to see, uh, those, those blue lines are gonna disappear into the, the texture, the wood grain, or whatever it is that you decide to draw on these pieces. All right. So I think the only other thing I had to do, let's see, step up, one, two, three, and I'm gonna be lazy and just try to eyeball. That yeah, looks pretty close. I won't go so far as to say decent. Eh, a little off. I can fix that by kind of fattening that line. Same on the inside of this one. There. It's not too bad. All right. There. Representative picture of the through tenon. And I suppose. The other thing I should do is draw that ear too. And then I think we'll be done. Those just represent the ends of these top stretchers. All right, so we've got a few different types of curves that have been incorporated into this, and they're just a sampling of some of the curves that we'll actually be designing and incorporating into our, our, uh, our, our plans with this third unit. Um, we'll also look at other uses of curves, things for curves that we can use for creating profiles of a molding, or curves that are based off of ellipses rather than circles. We'll, we'll work with both, and there's sometimes reasons to work with both. I want to darken this tabletop while I'm talking here. Um, so this is really just to give an idea of not so much how to draw these curves, but to get a sense of what kind of an impact 
they might make on a design. Because if we look at this design, especially with the rounded edges there and the reliefs cut out of these stretchers, those are um, they, they serve to lighten up the, the look and feel of the, the plan. Because if you look at the original plan from the notes that that um, I prepared for the very first uh, video in this, this lesson, you know, it's much blockier. These are beefier and heavier looking, and that might be what you want. Um, but if you're wanting to, and you know, this, the square top is fairly plain. So if you're wanting to refine an existing design, Without going overboard, you can include some subtle curves that really change the look and feel of the piece that you're working with. And so we'll, we'll develop these techniques that I've used in this, this design and several more over the course of the next several videos. So until then, thanks for watching.